Hello KMC and Happy New Year. We have this year um, started a, an initiative to read through the entire Bible as a church. And I, I do hope that you've been able to keep up with that uh, Bible calendar, the McShane Bible calendar that we've chosen to go through the Bible. I thought as an encouragement, hopefully that will uh, motivate you to continue with your reading. Every once in a while, it's not going to be every week, but periodically, uh, I'll pull from uh, a Bible passage that we've read over the last week and I'll share my insights. Um, these will hopefully be insights about texts that maybe you have questions about or maybe if something comes up in your own reading and you want to ask me a question about it or want me to do a video on it, please feel free to let me know. But for this week, I want to start off with a pretty controversial topic and a very interesting one. A lot of theories uh, as to what is going on here. And um, we don't know what's right, but I think I know what's right, so I'm going to share my opinion with you. But this is from Genesis chapter 6. And this is the question, did angels procreate with humans? And did they create some sort of... Uh, superhuman race uh, of Nephilim. So this is from Genesis chapter 6. Let me just read the passage quickly from Genesis 6. When man began to multiply in the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for his flesh, his days shall be a hundred twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. So there's the question. Who are the sons of God? And who are the daughters of man? And, and what is this um, Nephilim that came from them? Uh, there's a lot of different opinions about who the sons of God are. I think probably one of the most popular ones is that the sons of God are the angels. And these angels were rebellious angels. So they were fallen angels, demons, if you will. And these fallen angels uh, left their place in heaven and they came to earth and somehow uh, procreated with uh, human females, uh, thus creating a... a um, sort of a superhuman race of people. Now, I don't think that's the case. I believe that the sons of God were actually also themselves human. Now, if you look through the scriptures, you'll see that a son of God can indeed refer to an angel, but it could also refer to um, one of the people of God. And son of God also in the scripture can refer to a king, somebody in a position of authority. Even if that king is not uh, God-fearing. So uh, kings back in the ancient Near East, they used to refer to themselves as, as sons of God. So this uh, statement, son of God, has a lot of uh, range as to what it might be. But I think if you look at the text, what gives us the clue is if you look at Genesis chapter 4 and 5, in chapter 4, what you have is a lineage of the descendants of Cain. Cain, who was, of course, the bad brother, and so in that lineage, you have uh, all these people who, who do not fear God. That, that kind of comes to a culmination with this person, Lamech, who is bragging about killing somebody. So, you know, Lamech says about himself as he's bragging, if Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. So you've got this evil line. And then in contrast with that, in chapter 5, you have Adam's descendants through Seth. And that's where you have sort of these, um, this godly, this God-fearing line. So that gives us two uh, options here. Uh, the sons of God could be those who are in the line of Seth, um, and they were disobedient by taking wives from the other line, those who did not fear God, thus diluting uh, faithfulness in the people, and then leading up to this culmination of these, uh, these evil days when God is ready to wipe them out and then send the flood. Uh, the other option, the one I, I hold to, is that the sons of God refers to uh, mighty men, these, these men who are evil, these men who have become great unto themselves, uh, and they were pretty much uh, taking any wife that they, that they would choose. And they were creating for themselves uh, these great 
peoples great in their own eyes. And so that's what was going on with this, um, this Nephilim, these mighty people. By the way, Nephilim uh, does not necessarily mean giants as we typically uh, think Nephilim to be. Nephilim literally in the Hebrew means fallen ones. So there's my opinion. The sons of God were uh, godless kings who did whatever they pleased and they took whoever they wanted as their wives and they had children and this was really uh, a picture of the evil and the rebellion in those days that prompted God to send the flood. Do you have any other opinions, any other comments, want to push back? Go ahead and do so either in the comments or you could email me or message me and we'll continue to have, uh, Lord willing, have fruitful discussions as we read through God's Word.